Hello student, the question says, a square lead slab of side 50 cm and thickness 10 cm is subjected to a shearing force on its narrow face. Like on its narrow face means like, uh, let us take a zoom here since the diagram is also given in the question, the topmost face of 9 into 10 power 4 Newton. The lower edge is riveted to the floor. How much will the upper edge will go? See, riveted means this lower edge is fixed. Suppose originally we have a square in this way and this lower edge is fixed to the ground. That means this lower edge doesn't move. Now there are two kinds of forces. One is called shearing force. Shearing force is a force that we will get if we apply force parallel to the surface. Another way that we can apply force is we can apply force perpendicular to the surface. Since we applied perpendicular, this force is called as normal force. Since we applied force parallel to this, we can call it parallel force. But this force can also be called as shearing forces. So for a given surface, the force acts parallel to it. And in the question, it is given that the slab is of side, a square lead slab as a side of 50 centimeter. So this entire thing from here to here, this value is 50 centimeter. And let us take, this is a thickness. The thickness is given as 10 centimeter. So based on this information, we can find what is the area on which force is applied. Since these have square faces, so if this is 50, this one also 50 only. So we need to find this area on which the force is applied. So the force is applied area is this 50 centi, this is also 50 only. So length into breadth, so we can write 50 centimeter into 10 centimeter. So we can write 500 into 10 power minus 4. So area value would be 5 into 10 power minus 2 meter square. So we got the value of area. Once we got the value of area, now we have to find how much will the upper edge be displaced? Like what's the value of this upper edge displaced? Imagine if because of this applying this, originally it was in this way, the loop was in this way. After applying it, what happens is that like a jelly moves from one place to another place if you apply force. So it went in this way. It's slightly deformed in this way. Now you have to find this value, like how much it shifted. Let me take this as theta. Actually, this is an exaggerated one. This theta would be very small. This theta won't be this large. Then let me call this as the moment is delta x and let this be L. So we can simply write tan theta equals to delta x by L, which is equals to shearing stress divided by G. So this is the formula for this. So delta x by L equals to shearing stress divided by G. If you observe it carefully, this is similar to G equals to shearing stress by tan theta. So let us use that formula. So we know G equals to shearing stress. The shearing strain generally is equals to delta x by L, which is nothing but our tan theta where theta is very small. So based on this, I can write delta x is equals to shearing stress into length L divided by G. The value shearing stress, let us get the value of the shearing stress first. So shear stress equals to force per unit area. The force value given in the question is 9 into 10 power 4 Newton. So 9 into 10 power 4 divided by area, we just got it 5 into 10 power minus 2. 10 power minus 2. So we get this as 
1.8 into 10 power minus 6 newton per meter squared. And we know the length. This length is given as 50. And G value, we can get it from the chart that is given above it. Remember in all the example problem, most of the example problems, the value of Young's modulus and shear modulus are not given. We are supposed to look at the charts that are given in this chapter and find them. In the main examination, in any competitive examination or anything, these values would be given. For lead, it is 5.6 into 10 power 9. So 5.6 into 10 power 9. And the units are given as Newton per meter square. Now just substitute all of them in this expression. You will get delta x equals to 1.8 into 10 power minus 6 into length value is 50 centimeter. So we can write 50 into 10 power minus 2 divided by 5.6 into 10 power 9. So let us do that 1.8 into 50 divided by 5.6, which would be equals to 16.07 into 10 power minus 8 minus 9. So we get this value of delta x as there could be a, a small a technical mistake I'm, I'm making. So we can see delta x is equals to shearing stress into length divided by g value. Shearing stress value is given as 9 into 10 power 4 divided by this area of cross section that we got is 5 into 10 power minus 2. So if I do that, we'll get 9 into 10 power 4, so we get 1.8 into 10 power 6. I wrote it as minus 6. Then 1.8 into 10 power 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 minus 9. So 16.07 into 10 power minus 5 meter. In NCRT, the answer is given in millimeter. I can write 16.07 into 10 power minus 2 into 10 power minus 3 meter. We know 10 power minus 3 is milli. So 16.07 into 10 power minus 2 millimeter, which is also approximately equal to 0 0.16 millimeter. This is how we are supposed to solve the problem. The key point is from where do we get the value of G? We get it from this table. And what is the meaning of shear? Shear means if you apply parallel force and it will make the material deform in this way, that kind of stress is called shear stress and the force is called shear force. There is another force where you apply perpendicular that is called normal stress and normal force. Hope you understood how I have solved. Thank you.